कौन-कौन सर नहीं अब को होस्ट है आई डोंट नो so a very good morning today is uh, this topic is advanced packaging to introduce the person to the audience uh presta goel coordinator to kindly to the uh, audience Dr. Bhu. Okay, thank you. thank you, sir. Uh, good morning to all the participants on board. Uh, today's resource person, uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar Gupta, sir, Hamida ma'am, and uh, Dr. Rai, sir, and uh, any other who is uh, joined as a unregistered part uh, participant. <coughs> Friends, today we are fortunate. We have a very, uh, you can say, young and renowned professor. of in the field of uh, agricultural processing and food engineering he agreed to deliver a lecture in our 21 days workshop uh, the title of as you all knows the title of our workshop is uh, recent advances in agricultural and uh, agricultural engineering and technology uh, to enhancing the farmers income or doubling the farmers income so for that Uh, today, Dr. Raya, uh, Ajay Kumar Gupta sir is with us. Who is work? He is working as an assistant professor at College of Agricultural Engineering, JNKBV, Jab means Jawaharlal Nehru Kishi Vishwavidyalay, Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. And he completed his B Tech from uh, G B Pant, means Govind Vallabh Pant University of Agriculture and Technology, Pantnagar. And presently, uh, this is university. is in uttarakhand state uh, prior to separation of up and uttarakhand that was in uh, uttar pradesh after that dr gupta sir has earned his mtech from a very uh, important and very famous university that is uh, aligarh muslim university and uh, after that sir has uh, completed his phd from sardar vallabhbhai patel university of agriculture and technology uh, merit uttar pradesh uh, sir has more than 12 year uh, teaching experience as a professor and he guided more than 20 masters and uh, phd students in his particular specialization that is uh, food packaging or uh, agricultural processing and food engineering so with these words uh, without getting late i invite uh, to today's speaker professor ajay kumar gupta sir uh, kindly come forward and uh, the dice is your so please sir start your talk thank you thank you dr goel uh, first of all i would like to welcome or say good morning to the chairman of the session dr goel and all those who are coordinating this online lecture program as i have as i have been uh, been told that i need to deliver a lecture on advances on food packaging so without much delay uh, i would like to start this lecture now when we pack a food material the first question that arises in our mind is 
is there any need to pack the food material and why should we pack our food material so we first need to find out the reasons for the packaging of the food materials then only we can design a better food packaging system so as to ensure the delivery of uh, the food material at every point of, at every point at all the time and to everyone now we will come one by one the packaging protects the food from environmental factors such as the bacteria viruses the ingress of the oxygen that leads to deteriorative reactions in the food material we know that oxygen and water vapors are present in our atmosphere so they are obviously around our food material also oxygen causes various kind of oxidative reactions which lead to the deterioration of the food materials water vapors are present in the air surrounding the food material and the presence of water encourages the proliferation of microorganisms in the food materials so different kind of microorganisms it may be a bacteria it may be a fungi or yeast or mold they all causes different kind of spoilage in the food materials not only they consume the food material but mainly they produces different kind of toxins which may be uh, which may not be um, good for our health so the food spoilage takes place if we allow the food material to come in contact with the air so naturally the food packaging gives an environment wherein the food is uh, separated from the external environment which causes the different kind of spoilage during the transfer of material the food material from the point where it is generated that is field to the consumer plate the food material may may be exposed to different kind of threats different kind of assaults it may be a physical damage it may be a chemical attack or the food may be contaminated by biological vectors such as microorganisms insects and rodents so naturally the food gives a barrier and it protect the food material from chemical and physical damages during its transit from fields to the consumer plate the packaging protect the food against the biological agents such as the boring insects or rodents many times they spoil our food and you you must be aware that a large amount of the food material is consumed or spoiled by the rodents and insects so basically the food protects the the food packaging protects the food material from these kind of threats which may be encountered during its transit from field to the consumer then comes the convenience in uses naturally when we are having a food material with us we cannot consume food material at one point of time so we need to consume in parts so the if if the package are scientifically designed means they can be reclosed after the partial use as you can see from this uh, uh, photograph that uh, the uh, cooking oil is stored in a package uh, having a reuse or recloser facility so that it can be used repeatedly after as and when it is required uh, this is the simplest kind of design as far as the packaging is concerned but complicated designs may have the you know, facilities for uh, cooking the food material also with the help of some microwaves also packaging helps in unitization or grouping the food products many times when we are having processed food in our hand we need to uh, transfer that material from manufacturing unit to the wholesaler to the retailers and to the consumers so the unitization is a process that helps in convenient handling of the food material without any appreciable delays and uh, spoilage say for example in this carton you can see a poly packs of cooking oil are packed in a definite number and so that they can be counted they can be handled and they can be transferred easily 
so that way the packaging plays a very important role in the transfer of material from one place to another place packaging also helps in communication and educating the customers uh, packaging communicates with the customer and it educates the consumer also a good quality package also identifies the product to the consumer it uh, built up the brand value and many a times the customer they recognize the food product by just seeing the its package uh, some nutritional facts are always uh, displayed as per the mandatory requirement and similarly the food package also educate the customers to uh, how to utilize the food product say for example in this particular slide you can see that the baby food is there similarly uh, here you can see that method of preparation is also also given so that way the um, package communicates with the customer and it also educate the customers as far as its utilization is concerned a package should be the temper evident or temper resistant uh, uh, so that no adulteration or uh, mixing can be allowed in the packaged food the packaging also aids in processing of the food many times uh, the sterilization or the pasteurization process are uh, they are performed when the food is packed in the packaging material so that way it also acts as a processing aid or processing utensil also now we come to the requirements of food packaging why the food uh, what a food package should fulfill in order to be fit uh, for selection the packaging should be non toxic because the uh, many times uh, the prime most of the times the primary package they come in contact with the food material so it should be non toxic so that no poisonous material can be uh, transferred from the package to the food material it should protect against the contamination of microorganisms it should act as a barrier for moisture loss or gain or oxygen ingress because we know that food materials are living they respire they release uh, moisture and when the oxygen is available their respiration rate is high so that way the deteriorative reactions are also high so the package must ensure that there is a no loss or gain of the moisture during its storage in the package it should protect against the ingress of odors or environmental toxicants it should filter out the harmful uv light it should provide resistance to physical damage it should be transparent because in today's consumer life you cannot you you buy a product when you see it when you visually uh, when you are visually satisfied with the quality that is offered to you then only you pay the uh, uh, the sellers so that way if the package is transparent the visual inspection is possible it should be temper resistant or temper evident it should be easy to open it should have dispensing and releasing features it should be disposed of easily right now the environmental issues are there you cannot have any kind of package with you uh, it it should be recyclable it should not cause any kind of environmental uh, pollution so uh, and our whatever package we are going to select for for packaging it should full uh, it should uh, be easy to dispose of it should meet the size and shape and weight requirement it should have appearance and printability features uh, most of the uh, uh, advertisement by the food manufacturer it is done when the food is packed in a package so printing quality of the package it counts a lot and last but not the least it should be of low cost low cost means it should be economical not low cost it should be economical uh, it should be compatible with the food and have a special features such as unitizing groups or product together now we come to the different uh, we can classify the package uh, the package made up of uh, the plastic or jute they may be termed as the flexible uh, 
packaging materials like flexible sacks, wooden cartons, cartons, uh, pallet boxes, shipping containers, and baskets. Now we will uh, be having uh, in a broad. Uh, if we broadly classify the packaging material, two broad groups comes into the picture. That is the rigid packaging material and flexible packaging material. Rigid packaging material includes the wooden crates, plastic crates, wooden basket, and hampers. And flexible packaging, uh, they contain the jute sacks, plastic sacks, paper bags, plus uh, and mesh bags. Now we will come to uh, come to all the packaging one by one. Uh, here you can see the wooden crate is there, and uh, wooden crates are typically bound, uh, wire bound crates used for citrus fruits and potatoes. Wooden crates are resistant to weather or more efficient for large fruit. Uh, such as watermelons but right now the wooden crates they are getting out of the uh, circulation because they are heavy in weight uh, and many times they causes the damage to the food material uh, and they are difficult to handle because of their weight and size but uh, uh, still they are in utilization then wooden baskets and hampers these are the present trends uh, in the market. Uh, in these forms, the wooden baskets and hampers are being used to handle the food materials when it is raw, but uh, basically when it is raw in nature, when it is harvested and when it is signed to uh, the uh, processing uh, units. Then the most popular packaging material right now is the corrugated fiber boards. The corrugated fiber board is the most widely used material for fruits and vegetable packages because of the following characteristics. Because it is light, it is reasonably strong, uh, flexibility as far as the shape and size is concerned, it is easy to store, it has got good printing quality and it is economical also. So that way the corrugated fiber boards, they are mm, probably the most abundant packaging material right now we are using for uh, packaging of the food materials then wax fiber boards the wax fiber boards they are used when the material is to be hydro cooled or iced because uh, the uh, the waxing or the coating of uh, the water resistant material gives its more strength and durability then comes the rigid plastic packages it is a cam shell and uh, it is quite inexpensive it is versatile and it provides excellent protection to the produce uh, and it gives the pleasant uh, appearance to the food material also then comes the flexible packaging material the sacks the gunny bags are uh, the very much popular packaging material they are provided in plain weaves or different weaves are available so this is the gunny bag of uh, 50 kg capacity and uh, the different kind of weave pat weaving patterns are also available in the jute sacks such as the plain weave cross weaves uh, depending upon the material which we are going to handle and the different kind of uh, weaving patterns are available then the polypropylene sacks are also available they are quite popular they are durable and uh, uh, they are mostly used for and the packaging of the grains or the different kind of pulses etc then comes the paper bags the consumer packets packs of potatoes and onions are about the only produced item now packed in paper bags uh, in shopping malls wherein the fresh fruits and vegetables they are offered to the consumer most of the time they pack the material in the paper bags then comes the mesh bags they are good in ventilation and uh, the supermarket produce manager like small mesh bags because they make an attractive display and that stimulate purchase here you can see that the meshes are available and whatever the uh, the requirement of ventilation of the food material is there uh, it is fulfilled so the food product looks fresh and it gives pleasing appearance and it attracts the consumer also then comes the plastic bag. They are the most popular packaging material right now. We, wherever we go to the market, we when we purchase our food material, we carry the material in these polypropylene bags. 
Now, the packaging of the food material is done at different level. So, three levels are identified. One is the primary packaging, secondary packaging, and tertiary packaging. The primary package includes uh, the glass bottles. It may be a cane also. Basically, the primary packaging is a packaging that comes in direct contact with the food material. It should be non-toxic. It should be. It should not be fragile. It should be uh, having. It should have sufficient strength so that it can uh, it can protect the food material from different kind of physical damages. The secondary package is a package. Uh, it is not coming in direct contact with the food, but it helps in unitizing and handling of the food material. And tertiary package, as you can see, that these are the pellets wherein the food material they can be handled in bulk. Uh, primary package, as you can see, that there is a glass bottle containing milk, and it comes in direct contact with the food material, so it should be non-toxic. It should not cause no. Uh, no color loss or color change, and it should have sufficient strength and it should not be fragile. Secondary package container is an outer box or case or wrapper that holds or unitize several canes, jars, or pouches together. Clear? The tertiary package uh, contains uh, or it groups several secondary cartons together in a pallet load or shipping units. The objective is to aid the automated handling of large amount of food product. Uh, in this slide, you can see the different levels of packaging, uh, the primary packaging, secondary packaging, and tertiary packaging. Now we will come to the advances in the food packaging. First is your form, fill, and seal process. Form, fill, seal uh, system uh, basically, in this process, the package is formed in line and it is filled with the food, uh, food material and then it is sealed. Here you can see that we are having a uh, plastic roll which is printed with the, uh, the type of the food we are going to uh, offer to the consumer, the name of manufacturing company and so on. And it is passed through the different guide rolls. and. Uh, uh, here you can see that the package is formed in line. So basically most of the pouches which contain the liquid food, say for example the pasteurized milk or sterilized milk, uh, uh, they are packed in form filled seal uh, system. Clear? Then comes the retortable pouches. Retortable pouches are constructed in three ply laminate consisting of an outer layer of polyester film for high temperature resistance, strength, and printability, then middle layer of aluminum foil for barrier properties, and inner layer of polypropylene film that provides the heat seed integrity. We will see in the next slide how they are being formed. Here you can see that. Uh, this is uh, a cross-section of a retortable pouch having four layers. Outer layer is of polyester, which gives good printing surface and provides strength to the package. Then comes the aluminum that gives the barrier properties to the food material, to the package. It means it protects the food uh, from the adverse effect of light or ingress of gases and absorption of odors and it helps in extending the shelf life of the food product. Then comes the nylon uh, layer and the innermost layer is made up of polypropylene which is which have the good heat seal surface and it gives the good quality seal to the uh, food package. Here you can see how the different layers uh, in a food package can be generated we are having uncoated substrate it is uh, in the first step it is metallized then top coat is provided then that way a composite uh, packaging uh, material is obtained here you can see that different kind of package uh, packaging materials in a sheet form they can be uh, adhered together 
to form a composite sheet having uh, the desired characteristics uh, to give proper shelf life to the food product here you can see the uh, different kind of layers which may be present in our retortable pouches these are the formats of retortable pouches we may having the preformed pouches we may have form fill seal pouches we may have the pillow pouches or stand up pouches or fitment like this the another advanced techniques for the food packaging is aseptic packaging the word aseptic uh, means the absence or inclusion of any unwanted organism uh, from the food pack uh, product package or a specific area what i mean to say the food devoid of microorganisms particularly the microorganisms that are harmful to the human health means they they may be pathogen or they may be the food spoil uh, spoil is causing microorganism so if we want to extend the shelf life of a food product first we must ensure that the food product is uh, uh, there is no pathogenic microorganisms in the food material the food cannot be a source of disease to the customer or to the consumer so naturally when we design a food product our emphasis should be that it should it uh, the food material is free of pathogen and it is also free from the spoilage causing microorganism so basically aseptic packaging ensures that food does not contain any living microorganism or living system so aseptic packaging it can be defined as the filling of a commercially sterile product into a sterile containers under aseptic conditions and sealing the containers so that the reinfection is prevented that is so that they are hermetically sealed hermetically means airtight airtight containers it does not permit the exchange of gas from outside to inside or from inside to outside so the what are the reason for the use of aseptic packaging to enable the containers to be used that are unsuitable for in package sterilization to take advantage of high temperature short time that is htst sterilization process which are thermally efficient and generally gives rise to the products of a superior quality compared to those processed at lower temperature for longer time it has been observed that the high temperature short time sterilization processes they are superior as compared to the low temperature processes clear so the aseptic packaging allows the high temperature short time sterilization of the food material and to extend the shelf life of the product at normal temperature by packing them aseptically aseptic packaging system must be capable of filling the pro uh, the product produced by the high temperature short time or ultra high temperature in an aseptic manner and sterilize the containers hermetically so that the sterility is maintained throughout the handling and distribution process so the simply the uh, packing the sterile food product in a sterile container is not sufficient enough the aseptic packaging should also ensure that the food product will remain sterilized during its entire journey from the processing unit to the consumer end clear so what i mean to say it should be properly sealed the sterile condition should be maintained entirely during the uh, transfer of material from processing unit to the consumer plate here in this diagram you can see that how the aseptic packaging is done from one end the food product uh, is uh, it is fed to the system it is sterilized in between and containers they are also sterilized so that way we are having a sterile food product we are having the sterile containers and they are uh, 
they are sent to an environment which is aseptic in nature it means which is devoid of any living uh, living system over there they are the sterile containers are filled with the sterilized food product and they are sealed over there and that way the aseptic packaging of the food product is done the criteria and aseptic packaging system should be capable of meeting first is it should be able to be connected to the processing system in a manner that enables aseptic transfer of the product to take place able to be effectively sterilized before use able to carry out the filling sealing and critical transfer operation in an sterile environment and it should be able to be cleaned properly after use these are the criteria which a aseptic packaging system should fulfill in order to ensure that the food is uh, aseptically packed then comes the tetra packs they are also very popular right now the hygienic lightweight beverage package formed directly from a strip of plastic coated paper tetra pack aseptic yani tba is is for aseptically packaged long life product the packaging material delivered in a large reel enters the filling machine where it is sterilized by passing through a bath of hydrogen peroxide and then dried in hot sterile air and formed into a tube inside a closed aseptic chamber what i mean to say here uh, the packaging material it is delivered in a form of large reel it is formed over there in a filling section the packaging uh, definite form is given to the uh, the packaging material and then it is filled with the sterilized food product and then it is packed then comes modified atmospheric packaging it is also one of the most advanced methods of food packaging right now uh, uh, abundantly practiced modified atmospheric uh, packaging is based on the modification of air inside the package it is done by displacing normal air for composition of gases it creates an atmosphere that is low in oxygen often with altered level of nitrogen and carbon dioxide the composition can be entirely changed based on the product what i mean to say suppose we food, we pack a food product there will be some head space it means there there should be uh, there is always some gap uh, at the level of the food product and the seal and that uh, head space contains uh, the air which contains oxygen so the oxygen present in the head space may oxidize the food product and that may cause rancidity and other spoilage reactions so that way in a modified atmospheric packaging we modify that environment we displace that normal air with some inert gases that do not encourage the uh, oxidation of the food material the modified atmospheric packaging can be divided into two different categories first is your active modified atmospheric packaging and second one is passive modified atmospheric packaging active modified uh, it is defined as displacement of gases in the package which is then replaced by a desired mixture of gases what i uh, what we people are doing here we are displacing air and we are uh, that that space is replaced with some composition or some mixture of gases which 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 are not causing uh, the oxidation of the food material then passive modified atmospheric packaging it is when the product is packed in a certain film type and the desired atmosphere within the package develops naturally as the consequence of the product respiration and the diffusion of gases through the films in passive atmospheric packaging we do not replace the air with some inert gases but during the storage the when the food respires the different gases uh, they are produced and the concentration of the oxygen in the head space it also goes down so that way a natural environment is created that uh, 
uh, that do not encourage the oxidation of the food material. So that way the storage life or the shelf life of the product increases. The benefits of the modified atmospheric packaging, it extends the shelf life. Pest and contamination does not stand such chance. No use of chemicals suitable for organic products and it gives better quality food products. The process of uh, modified atmospheric creation includes the creation of a modified atmospheric it starts with the creation of vacuum. Unlike with vacuum packaging, it is not a goal to merely get rid of air in the package. We need to replenish the vacuum created with a mixture of gases by flushing into it. Right now, the nitrogen gas is actively pumped to displace the oxygen. Clear? Then another advanced method for food, food storage is the controlled atmospheric storage. Cap or controlled atmospheric storage is a storage technique rather than a shelf ready retail technique. It allows alteration of a storage condition for the packaging during its lifetime. The controlled atmosphere, the gas composition isn't modified straightway, but later on using the proper films or coating, you are able to change the gas reacting to the respiration inside the bag. The difference between the modified atmospheric packaging and controlled atmospheric storage is in modified atmospheric packaging, the gas composition is modified initially, creating a custom atmosphere for each product. Uh, on the other hand, in the controlled atmospheric storage, the atmosphere is continuously controlled throughout the storage period. The vacuum or gas packaging, it is also the method that is right now, it is very much popular. You can see the vacuum packaged foods and gas packaged foods like chips, wherein uh, some inert gas like nitrogen is filled in the food package. So that way, uh, it does not permit the ingress of oxygen from outside to uh, inside of the package. And that way, it uh, reduces the chances of oxidation of the uh, the potato chips packed in the package. So vacuum packaging, with airtight vacuum packaging, almost all the air is removed from the package. The packaging is then hermetically sealed to maintain the vacuum. So these are the equipments. The, it is a vacuum packaging machine. And on the right hand side, you can see the various food products and uh, opt-in after the vacuum packaging. The benefits of the vacuum packaging includes it protects the content from oxidation or slows down the oxidation process. It prevents the buildup of moisture. It inhibits the growth of oxygen-dependent microorganism and reproduction of insects. Now we come to the smart packaging that includes the intelligent packaging and active packaging. So why we require a smart packaging system right now? Because we know that the population is increasing, new demands is coming, and there is a change in the atmosphere, the consumer lifestyle, the consumer demand, a better quality of food products. They they want they, they are willing to offer the higher prices for the commodity, but they want to uh, ensure that the food that they are getting, it is of good quality. So the changes in consumer lifestyle and behavior is another reason for uh, designing some smart packages. Changes in production practices, change in food sales, environmental care, healthier and safer foods. These are the certain and the parameters that drive for designing of the a smart packaging system. So new technologies are available that are helpful in designing the smart packaging, such as biotechnology, nanotechnology, etc. The smart packaging ensures the extended food uh, shelf life of the product, keeps and supervises 
food safety and quality, interact with the food, establish a communication with the consumer. So the two uh, packaging, that is active packaging and intelligent packaging, they are the uh, they are getting currency uh, presently, and we will be discussing both of them: the smart packaging and the intelligent packaging. So it mass packaging includes the active packaging and intelligent packaging. Active packaging controls the uh, the various parameters uh, such as the antimicrobial, MAB, MAP, antioxidant, and others. And the intelligent packaging gives it interacts with the consumer uh, just to tell about its quality right, uh, presently. Say, for example, different kind of indicators may be there that indicates the freshness, the microbial spoilage, level of the food product, the gas composition, integrity, and time and temperature, thermal abuse, and comfort. And the sensors such as the biosensors, electronic noses, and tongues, they are present. And some data carriers such as RFID, barcodes, QR codes, they are also being incorporated in the food package in order to make them smart. So active and intelligent packaging, there are two forms of smart packaging. One is the active packaging, which employs the technology that intentionally release or absorb compounds from the food or the headspace of the food packaging, which extend the shelf life of the product by stalling the degradative reactions of lipid oxidation, microbial growth, the moisture loss, or gain, or better than traditional food packaging. So the question arises, why we require an active packaging? The reason is that uh, active packaging, it controls the various parameters, such as the moisture content that helps in ensuring the good quality food products and that way it ensures the extended shelf life of the commodity. So intelligent packaging, another smart packaging is the intelligent packaging. It communicates to the consumer and others throughout its value chain. So two types of smart packaging will advance the packaging sector. Scavengers for oxygen, ethylene and moisture continues to dominate the active packaging. So different, in order to make an uh, active packaging system, we need to uh, incorporate some scavengers such as the uh, uh, such as the different kind of scavengers, just ethylene scavengers are also incorporated that uh, uh, that reduces the level of ethylene in the product that is responsible for the ripening of the food products. First is your oxygen scavenger. Oxygen scavenger stores the oxidation and inhibition of microbial growth. The most common substrate is oxygen scavenger is iron, followed by the ascorbic acid and other substances. Uh, right now we are having the uh, oxygen scavenging system in a form of a chip that that we. Uh, the package, it helps in reducing the oxygen content uh, of the food material. Ethylene scavengers such as zeolite or potassium permanganate, they absorb ethylene and moisture. That way they reduce the senescence and release of sulfur dioxide. And uh, if the water comes in contact with the sachet pads that contains the sodium metabisulfite. Ethylene scavengers, in addition to the compound uh, one methyl cyclopropane, that is one MCP, it is commonly being used in washing and processing of the fresh products and block the ethylene receptor and slow down the senescence process. Some moisture scavengers such as clay, zeolite, hematents, and other compounds in packaging substrate absorb moisture by adding high capacity hydrogels in packaging structure that allows more efficient moisture con control. Then different kind of emitters are also uh, provided in the food materials uh, uh, in the food packaging system. They are incorporated with the food packaging system. So that way they, they help in making an active packaging system. 
then comes the intelligent packaging that uh, includes the radio frequency identification system that is rfid radio frequency identification system rfid it is becoming essential component of supply chain management for communicating with different stages of the supply chain uh, American company like Walmart, they are using the RFID technology to track the fresh fruits and vegetables. RFID GPS data recorders have reduced wastage of the food product at, as it moves through the supply chain. D data recorders are battery operated memory devices with a microprocessor which record data over a time or location. RFID tags communicate via the terminal using electromagnetic waves that monitors the various parameters, for example, temperature and termination date and identity of content. GPS can track products and provide real time in transit data about the product's condition and location. The chip is more reliable than barcode. The main advantage of RFID is that the physical contact between the reader and tag is avoided. Here you can see the different RFID tags that are being used in the food packaging system. RFID tags use RF electromagnetic fields to store and communicate real-time information on the product for automatic product identification and traceability. The tags consist of an integrated circuit attached to an antenna for transmission of information stored in the chip to a reader. The tag chip contains memory which store uh, which stores the product's electronic product code and other variable uh, information so that it can be read and tracked by RFID reader anywhere. Here you can see that different kind of RFID tags are available. Tags can be uh, attached almost anywhere items, cases or pallets of product, high value goods, vehicle assets, livestock or personal. Means the RFID tag, uh, basically it stores some information uh, as far as the product quality, product contents are concerned and it can be read anywhere and it can be stick anywhere. So two types of RFID tags are there. One is the passive tags, which do not require power. They draw power from interrogator field low storage capacity means the capacity the information that you can store is not of uh, of very high value uh, around uh, 1 kb information can be stored shorter read ranges it means you come near to the rfid tag uh, in order to draw some information from it usually write once read many or read only tax cost around 52 rupees thousand then comes the active tax they are battery operated they have the higher storage capacity means you can store more information for your food product in these in these tax long read range means around 300 feet typically it can be rewritten by rf interrogator and they cost around 3000 to 15,000. So different tag memories are there, read only tags, uh, worms tags are there that it write once, read many tags that is that are termed as the worm or read or write tags. Tags can be changed over a time or part of all the data section can be located. Then comes the RFID reader. The reader it functions, uh, it is remote uh, remotely powered tags establish a bi-directional data link inventory tags filter results so that way it can be uh, placed such as entrance or exit or point of sale wherein the information that is stored on the tag it can be read by the rfid reader so different kind of rfid readers are the fixed reader the handheld readers the mobile readers how they can be utilized in better food chain management 
the Walmart has recently begun using RFID technology to mark its palette from fresh fruits or vegetable and made it easier to deliver on time. RFID can monitor temperature of various products, for example, to maintain quality. Temperatures are monitored and if a spoiled product occurs, it can be returned. The firm can track the shipment from right, right from the source till the consumers. Uh, the most uh, advantage that, that can be drawn from the smart and intelligent packaging is the digitization of the fruit and vegetable supply chain system. The digitization is a great way to make the supply of fresh fruits and vegetables more predictable, efficient and transparent as well as traceable. Supply chain digitization helps to match the demand with supply. Digitization and monitoring system can make the whole process a lot easier and efficient, time saving, money and waste saving. The digital data in agriculture, post harvest and trade can be used to ensure reliable product quality while improving and traceability and efficiency from farm to the consumer. So what I mean to say the smart packaging uh, gives transparency in the food packaging uh, food supply chain wherein you can monitor the quality of the product when it is in transit when it is in a storage consumer can also uh, get some essential data as far as the nutrition value the date of expiry are concerned on the other hand, the food manufacturers, if they are having the good control on the supply chains of the food material, they will be having and they will be having better command on the food inventory management and uh, they can manage their inventory and ensure the food product is delivered in right quantity in at right time at right place. Uh, and that way it reduces the losses in the food supply system. So with these words, I would like to finish my today's lecture. Uh, in case if there is any query, one can ask. <laughs> so thank you, sir. Thank you very much for uh, your kind address to our participants I hope uh, all of them have benefited from your uh, lecture it was quite informative so thank you once again there are a couple of questions that I can see in the chat box you can also see in the chat box also sir okay sir. Dr. Narendra Grawal wants to know uh, that various packaging materials commonly used are plastic like plastic like plastic crates plastic bags but as we mm. already know okay. plastic is not suitable for fruits as well as health so what should we do or what type of material should we use for packaging of fruits he's simply asking right uh, now for replacement of plastics in packaging Actually, right now, a large number of research works are uh, they are being conducted uh, to replace the plastic from the food packaging system. Actually, the the plastic uh, they they are the probably it is one of the most uh, prominent reason for the environmental deterioration. Everywhere you can see the plastic refuse. So we are replacing. We are trying to replace with the, the plastic with edible films or the films that can be uh, that can that can be that are uh, environmental friendly means incorporation of different kind of cellulose etc uh, these kinds of work are uh, they are being carried on and probably in future time you will have a proper replacement in the form of edible films or different kind of coatings uh, that way we can reduce the plastics in the food supply system Thank you, sir. Thank you uh, for your kind answer. 
my submission in this regard is that uh, in a country or in a system where we are being served uh, we are tea tea is being served in the plastic containers or plastic lined uh, pots uh, it's a very far fetched uh, work still to replace the containers with plastics plastics are so uh, it, it, they have so been uh, close to our uh, life that uh, uh, eliminating them all of a sudden from all the areas of our uh, all the walks of our life is seems to be difficult however uh, research is uh, going on and uh, hopefully soon we will have some uh, replacement some material uh, that can replace plastic and that can be uh, not be uh, unhealthy uh, dr asma sherwani wants to know sir are there any challenges in the adoption of smart packaging and can small sized fruit producers implement this technique sir actually the smart packaging have two dimension one is your active packaging and another one is your intelligent packaging right now when the, there is a paradigm shift in consumer behavior actually what is happening now the consumer is more literate they want to ensure that whatever they are paying they are getting as a, a proper value of the money they spent on so the, whenever you go to a supermarket you find the different kind of shelves are there right now only few things are uh, they are declared to the consumer such as the expiry date the nutrient content at the time of manufacture but we know that during the storage also there is a deterioration in the nutritional value of the food product say for example some vitamin contents are there some vitamins are light sensitive so during its exposure prolonged expo exposure to the light there may be some deterioration in the the content of the uh, the nutrient content of the food products so the consumer if he claims that he is not getting whatever uh, the company is claiming uh, that this 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 food product contains this much milligram of the uh, of the particular nutrient so that way the intelligent packaging will declare right now that this this is the protein value this is the carbohydrate value at this time and in future you can also predict the value of the the nutrients so that way there will be more uh, i can say that that will that will be the micro management of the food materials so that way it holds a, a great promise because the consumer uh, right now they are more enlightened and and they are they are willing to pay high in case if the product is of good quality so that way the intelligent packaging and smart packaging they are going to play a very big role as far as the food supply chain management is concerned thank you sir our uh, next question is how can consumers minimize the exposure to harmful chemicals in packed food harmful actually in packed food the quality the consumer cannot alter only the food manufacturer they can alter the quality uh, basically we are having the uh, standards as far as the fpo is or fda is concerned they used to monitor the quality of the packed food product and different kind of penal uh, restrictions and punishment processes are also there in case if the food is Uh, food contains some uh, something harmful uh, to the consumers thank you sir vaibhav patel wants to know sir what are the problems of our indian food processing industries facing to implementation of rfid uh, actually um, as far as my knowledge is concerned the rfid it holds promise in the indian market but uh, as the processing level is quite low in india and right now the consumer they are also and uh, the consumer uh, basically the consumer base and consumer demands are under development in a country like us so 
when the consumer they are in a condition to accept the uh, the uh, the product that is being designed keeping in view of their um, uh, their demands then then only this rfid technology will have a better expansion thank you sir now i hope participant thank you permissions to self send uh, this person still here so part requested to ask your questions directly by unmuting yourself from the system please hello and ask your hello mr vastava raise your hand do you have any question yes sir my question is that whether uh, packaging machines are manufactured in india or they are imported from the other countries hello uh, in india yes, large number of manufacturers they are uh, making packaging machines particularly the form fill seal machines and different kind of machines they are being manufactured in india uh, uh, foreign manufacturer they are also supplying uh, the machines to the india so uh, this sector is growing and more and more food manufacturer food machinery manufacturer they are coming in flow Yes, sir. my second question is, sir, due to uh, packaging process, a lot of garbage or waste materials are produced. After uh, consuming the product, the customer uh, throws the packaging material, which creates a problem. Then uh, my uh, uh, question is that whether uh, pack, uh, uh, processing companies or packaging Uh, companies, they are having any management to recycle the garbage of the packed material, packed item. Actually, right now the government uh, they are encouraging the, uh, as you know that in Swachh Bharat Abhiyan also we have put the different kind of uh, garbage bo collection boxes. we need to change our attitude as far as the food packaging waste is concerned because this uh, food packaging waste it is probably generated all the time at all the places because we all are consumer so first we need to change our behavior in order to remove the different kind of uh, the harmful effect to the environment and to the, some government legislations are there the government only permits that kind of uh, packaging or food manufacturer that can be biodegradable so both way we people are working but what we need to do we need to be little enlightened as far as the food package utilization and disposal of food package is concerned yes sir my third question is another question please uh, package food items फ्रीज Or to today, they are more costly. Your voice is not clear. Not for the poor people. My my question is that packaged food items are more costly. Processed and packaged food items are costlier. Uh, you mean to say that why we require packaging? because we are a poor country and we cannot afford uh, the quality uh, the package foods yeah 
for example, potato chips, which are packed and processed and packed, they are costly. For Indian they, people, they are costly. I understand. But as far as uh, when you pack a food product, you come across with various uh, legal obligations also. Similarly, you uh, whatever you process, because it contains lot of capital intensive machinery. That's why they are and they are little costlier. But the trend is there okay, that we people are moving toward the packaged food slowly and slowly. Uh, whether uh, though it may be costly, but at the same time they offer the good quality food product, and that can be regulated also in case if kind of any kind of poisoning or foodborne disease is there, one can track and go to the consumer court. So this is the uh, right now. This is the trend. You cannot avoid uh, packaging. But you can ask questions now. Yes, sir. My last, my last question is my last question is that due to processing processed foods or packaged foods, the food item becomes unavailable yes, or more costly for the poor people. Is the uh, manufacturer of the food they store the food?